اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Moderation Analysis In this session, we are going to focus on how to perform moderation analysis in R using SEM in R. Introduction Moderation describes a situation in which the relationship between two constructs is not constant but is actually dependent on the values of a third variable that we refer to as a moderating variable. Now this moderating variable changes the strength or even the direction of relationship between the two constructs in a model. That is, it may strengthen, it may weaken the relationship between two constructs in a study. Now for example, research has shown the relationship between culture and organizational performance differs as a function of role ambiguity. That is, if there is high role ambiguity, the relationship between collaborative culture that is the example variable for this particular lecture and organizational performance it actually weakens however at low role ambiguity this particular relationship is further strengthened moderating relationships are hypothesized a priori by the researcher the testing of moderating relationship depends on whether the researcher hypothesizes whether one specific model relationship or whether all model relationship depend on the value of the moderator. Now the test that we use is dependent on whether a single relationship is being moderated or whether all the relationships in the model are moderated. Modeling moderating effects. Now this figure illustrates two stage approach that we are going to use for moderation analysis. This is stage one and this is stage two with the moderating effect. Now the main effect model in stage one, that is the impact of moderator on the dependent variable and the impact of independent exogenous variable on the dependent variable. Now this is the relationship that is P1 is being moderated by this M moderating variable. Now how do we model this? We model this in stage two. So your modeling of moderating effects is actually divided in stage one and stage two when you are using a two stage approach that is recommended for modeling moderating effects. Now the main effect model in stage one, this is the main effect model where we only have the IV exogenous variable, the moderating variable, and that is impacting Y2. Now both of them are exogenous variables for this endogenous variable. And we've got variable scores or now we run this to obtain the latent variable scores for Y1, Y2 and M. Now we run this model and we get our latent variable scores for these constructs. The latent variable scores of Y1 and M are then multiplied like this and we get a single item that is used to measure the moderating or interaction effect or interaction term. The latent variables Y1, Y2 and M are each measured with a single item of the latent variable scores from stage 1. Now in stage 2, all these are measured using a single item. And what is the single item? This is the latent variable score that we got from stage 1. Now it is important to note that the limitations identified for single item scale do not apply here because we got these latent variable scores from these multiple items from stage one. Model evaluation. For the interaction term, there is no requirement to assess its measurement model. The interaction term will not be assessed for the quality criteria that we normally do for our other latent variables. Now, what we normally do or what we should do is we need to evaluate our measurement model that is reliability and validity of the constructs without the moderating effect. Before adding the moderating effect to the model, you should have another model whereby you assess the reliability and validity of all your constructs. Now this is actually an auxiliary measurement that incorporates the interrelationship between the moderator and the exogenous construct in the path model. This characteristic, however, renders any measurement model assessment of the interaction term meaningless. In addition, standard measurement model evaluation standards would not apply since the interaction term is measured using single item. 
Therefore, the interaction term does not necessarily have to be assessed in the measurement model evaluation step. So whenever you are performing your moderation analysis, you do not incorporate the moderating effect in your measurement model analysis. You only include it after you have done your measurement model analysis. Now finally, it's always important to consider the standard criteria for structural model assessment. In the context of moderation, particular attention should be paid to f square effect size of the interaction effect. Now, how do we calculate f square effect size? We are going to look into the formula and the whole process as well. This criterion enables an assessment of the change in R square value when an exogenous construct is omitted from the model. With regard to the interaction effect, the F square effect size indicates how much the moderation contributes to the explanation of endogenous construct. So F square effect size will tell you it's the contribution of the moderation in explanation of the endogenous construct. And how it is calculated? The simple formula is like this. R square included, R square excluded, 1 minus R square included. R square included means with the inclusion of moderating effect. R square excluded means with the exclusion of moderating effect. Where R square included and R square excluded are the R square values of the endogenous construct when the interaction term of the moderator model is included or excluded from the PLS path model. In this way, one can assess the relevance of moderating effect, whether or not the moderating effect is contributing towards the endogenous construct or not. General guidelines for assessing f square suggest values of 0 0.02, 0 0.15 and 0.35 for small, medium and large effect sizes. And these values are suggested by Cohen in 1988. However, Aguinis and others have shown that the average effect size in tests of moderation is only 0 0.009. Now against this background, in Kenny in 2018 proposes that 0 0.005, 0 0.01 and 0 0.025 respectively constitute more realistic standards for small, medium and large effect sizes, but also points out that even these values are very optimistic, that you may not get a very large effect size. Now this is what we have done up until now. Now this is the loading the library, creating our measurement model, estimating the model, bootstrapping the model. I'm not going to go into detail of this because we have already done this. Now we are going to use this code to create our moderating effect. Now let's copy this code first and let's see if we get an, any error. If we do, obviously, we are going to try to correct it. Let's add our script, paste it. Looks all right. Let's run it. And did all the observations were valid? Yes. Moderation analysis illustration. Now we are going to look into how to perform moderation analysis in R. Now in this example, the impact of collaborative culture on organizational performance is moderated by role ambiguity. Role ambiguity negatively affects the strength of relationship between collaborative culture and organizational performance. Creating an interaction term by hand can be time consuming and error prone. Now, in order to solve this issue, Seminar provides functions by simply creating interactions between constructs. In doing so, Seminar adjusts the standard errors of the construct scores in the generation of interaction term. Now, when you are generating the interaction term, there are different methods. There is two stage, there is product indicator, and there is orthogonal. Now we are going to use the two stage approach. If you need to know more about it, you need to refer to the book or you can refer to the primer on partial least square structure equation modeling as well. Moderator variable is introduced through the interaction term in the PLS path model. But the fundamental question remains, how should the interaction term be operationalized? Research has proposed three primary methods as we saw in the last slide. Simulation studies have shown that Chin, Markolin and Newstead in 2013 two-stage approach excels in terms of parameter recovery and statistical power. 
Now, in addition, this approach offers much flexibility as it is the only approach that is applicable when, a, when the exogenous construct Y1 or the moderator M is, is specified formatively. Now, we therefore recommend using two-stage approach in most situations of creating the interaction term. So, two-stage approach is preferred. Now, you need two-stage approach when you want to know the significance of moderating effect. So, this is the approach that we are going to use. The seminar syntax uses an asterisk, that is a multiplication sign, as a naming convention for the interaction construct. When creating an interaction term from the construct, collaborative culture and role ambiguity, the resulting interaction is called collaborative culture and multiplied by role ambiguity in the structural model. Therefore, it is recommended to refrain from using a, this particular symbol in naming of the non-interaction constructs. In addition to including the moderator construct, we need to specify the interaction term composed of the independent variable collaborative culture and the moderator role ambiguity using the interaction term function. Now, we just do not only include the interaction term, we have to put it in the function as well. Now, how to do this? I'm going to tell you in a short while. The interaction function takes the following arguments, IV, that is your independent variable, your moderating variable, and the method that you are going to use to create the interaction, that is product indicator, orthogonal, or two-stage. In this case, we are using two-stage. We now need to choose in two-stage approach to create the interaction term. And how to do this? We simply use this function to create the interaction term with our IV, with our moderator, and the method. Now, seminar automatically generates a name for the new interaction term, and that is through the multiplication of your IV and the moderator. Note that seminar always standardizes the data when calculating the interaction term. So it's always standardized. Now look at this interaction term. Now this is part of your measurement model. So you add your interaction term fun function in the measurement model. And how to do this? Let's do it in R. Look at this. This is my moderator. This is my IV. And this is my DV. Now, next is I need an interaction term and I want to assess its impact on organizational performance. So how do we create an interaction term that is an integral part of moderation? This is how you create it. You name your IV, that is obviously this variable. You name your moderator, which is this variable. And then you mention your method. Let's run it and no issues found. Let's now go to the next step. Once you have created your measurement model or specified rather your measurement model, the next thing is that you need to create your structural model where you model your relationship from your exogenous variables to your dependent variables. Now, have a look here. Now, there are two ways you can do it. You can do it through separate paths or you can do it from one single path function like this. Now, whatever you use is fine, but this is more parsimonious in terms of writing uh, a code. So let's use this one for now. So your structural model, your relationships functions called, your paths, that is from your IVs and your interaction to your DV. This is a simple moderating relationship. That is your IV, your DV and your moderator along with the moderating effect. Let's run it. So no errors here as well. Now we need to create or identify the F square effect size. So how do we do this? Let's quickly go through this. R square excluded. In this example, RA is not a proper antecedent that affects organizational performance. And the objective is just to assess the moderating role of RA. Since RA is not a proper antecedent and the role of RA is just as a moderating variable, when calculating R square excluded, that is without the moderating effect, both the moderator and the moderating effects are removed from the model. Now, what if this RA was a proper antecedent and we wanted to know whether this RA affects the dependent variable apart from its moderating role as well, then we would have included the RA. R square excluded is comprised of the effect of collaborative culture on OP without the moderating variable and without the moderating effect. Now, just in case, if RA was a proper antecedent of OP 
and we were only interested in assessing the moderating effect, then we would have included RA in R square excluded because we were only interested in finding out the size of interaction. The F square term would then compare the R square of the additive terms plus the interaction terms versus just the additive terms. Just to make it simple, the RA variable will not be part of the model when I'm calculating R square excluded that is without the moderating variable and the moderating effect. So R square excluded, how do I get it? Let's go back to R again, have a look here. Just collaborative culture and organizational performance, the direct effect between the two variables because RA that is your role ambiguity is just there to be a moderator. Run it. Here is your R square 0.324. So let's go back here. 0.324. So what's your R square included? That is including the moderator and moderating effect. So let's come back here. And we will get to know about this when we run our model as well. So let's get back to the model for now. So let's estimate the model. Here it is. Let's copy this text for now and put it in the Okay, now here it is. Let's estimate the model. Run and let's see what our R square is. And R square is with the inclusion of the moderator and the moderating variable is 0.381. So here it is. Now R square excluded without inclusion of the moderator and the moderating effect, just the direct effect. This is R square included. And when you perform the calculation in the end, you will get the effect size of 0 0.09. Now based on Kenny proposition that 0 0.005, 0 0.01 and 0 0.025 respectively constitute small, medium and large effect sizes of the moderation, this is a large effect size because this is greater than 0 0.025. As normal, the first step is to assess the measurement model that we have already already discussed that you do your measurement model assessment. When assessing the measurement model, there is no need to create the interaction term. Just create your interaction term effect after or for the structural model assessment. Now the next step is performing a bootstrap. So let's do bootstrapping first and then we are going to generate the bootstrap parts as well. So where is my bootstrapping? Let's do bootstrapping to get our interaction effect or the effect of the interaction term on your DV so you find out whether or not your moderation is significant. So let's copy this text here, summary, and then we are going to generate the slope analysis as well. So let's quickly go through the first thing, get your measurement model, get your structural model, estimate the model, get your R squares, and now the next step is bootstrapping the model. So you perform your bootstrapping. Let's do our bootstrapping run. And it is bootstrapping the model. As you know, it may take a few um, seconds sometimes or minutes. Normally it's recommended to have 10,000, but for the sake of these sessions, I'm just keeping it to 1000. Now, once that is done, the next step is generating summary. So we'll call the summary function. We will have our boot underscore model for the object for which we generate the summary and the generated summary is stored in this particular object. So it did run successfully. Let's generate our summaries. Run and the summary generated. Let's get our paths. Run and let's have a look here. Look at this. Is it significant? Yes, it's significant. The T value is greater than 1.96 and there is no zero in between. So your interaction is significant. That is role ambiguity is moderating the relationship between collaborative culture and organizational performance. Is it positive or negative? It's a negative moderation. This means higher role ambiguity will weaken the relationship between collaborative culture and organizational performance because we already proposed that the relationship between collaborative culture and organizational performance is a positive one. The moderator is actually weakening this relationship. Now we are going to further look into detail as to how to interpret these results. Now that we have run this model, again, we can generate our slopes as well. 
I'm doing I'm going to come back to this in a moment but before that let's explain the results in simple manner now that we've got the results I'm just going to get the slope as can be seen in the results the interaction term that is collaborative culture into role ambiguity has a negative effect on organizational performance and that was minus 0.130 Whereas the simple effect of collaborative culture on organizational performance was positive. That is, there was a positive relationship between collaborative culture and organizational performance. However, the interaction was negative. This means that role ambiguity is moderating the relationship negatively. Jointly, these results suggest that the relationship between collaborative culture on organizational performance is 0.514 for an average level of role ambiguity. So when you've got a normal role ambiguity, the relationship or the regression weight is 0.514, which is good enough. This is means that a normal role ambiguity, collaborative culture and organizational performance have a positive effect. And that was significant as well. Now, what if role ambiguity is high? Now, for higher levels of role ambiguity, that is, for every standard deviation unit of increase in role ambiguity. So, what if your role ambiguity increases? Now, the relationship between collaborative culture and organizational performance will actually decrease. Why am I saying that it's going to decrease? Because there was a negative sign with the interaction effect. How much is going to decrease? So, you simply add your regression weight from your direct effect with your regression weight from your moderating effect. Now it has a negative sign since we are saying higher levels. So we've got a positive sign. So it's going to decrease by 0.384. So when your role ambiguity increases, it's going to decrease the relationship between collaborative culture and organizational performance by the size of the interaction term. So when role ambiguity increases for every standard deviation unit increase of role ambiguity. The relationship between collaborative culture and organizational performance will decrease. How much decrease would it be? It would be this much, 0.384. On the contrary, for the levels of role ambiguity, that is for every standard deviation unit decrease in role ambiguity when the role ambiguity is low. The relationship between collaborative culture and organizational performance will increase, will it strengthen? And that is by the size of the interaction term, 0.514 negative sign look at this there is a negative sign here previously it was a positive sign here the negative sign shows the decrease in the moderator in the level of the moderator now this is going to be the increase the strength that we are going to get now on average it was this but when it decreases this is the increase in the size of the effect of collaborative culture on organizational performance however when the role ambiguity is high this is the size of the effect of collaborative culture on organizational performance and we can see that with the decrease it's going to be increased that is the strength of relationship between iv and dv and with an increase there is going to be a decrease decrease to a level of 0.384 from 0.514 now slope analysis now what you do is you simply tell the r program that this is your moderated model this is your dv this is your moderator this is your iv and this is actually where you want it where do you want your legend you want it on the bottom right you can have it on top left and others as well now let's run this okay let's get this and then we are going to interpret this as well copy and let's paste it here let's run it again let's have a look slope analysis the moderated model simple underscore model look at this this is your original model that you specified now look at this this is the model that you estimated then you've got your dv your moderator your iv and then where you want your legend on the model now we are getting figure margins too large let's okay what happens is when you have this window closed sometimes it gives this error so let's run it again and now it's here let's have a look here okay let's say Let's look at it via zoom and let's get this here. Now this particular line here, look at this. This dotted line is role ambiguity at minus one standard deviation. That is low role ambiguity. This is low role ambiguity. 
now rule ambiguity is at mean and this is rule ambiguity at plus one look at this this these three lines which one is steeper now moderation analysis or moderation graphs are actually assessed based on the steepness of the curve how steeper is the curve now this line here is much steeper in comparison to this line or this line so this shows that when your role ambiguity is low there is a more stronger effect of a collaborative culture on organizational performance now when the role ambiguity is high that is plus one standard deviation the impact is weakened so although you have got collaborative culture your organizational performance do not increase that much now let's go back to our analysis to better comprehend the results of moderation analysis we can use slope analysis as we've just seen and we apply it on model that we estimated earlier and look at this the steepness of this particular line here that is at your low role ambiguity it's much steeper and the moderation analysis is assessed based on the steepness of these curves in this case this is much steeper and you can obviously easily interpret that when low role ambiguity is low there is a more positive impact of collaborative culture on organizational performance i hope this particular session would have helped you understand the concept of moderation and how to use it in r i've used these two references for the preparation of this particular lecture i hope this session would have helped you understand the concept of moderation and how to use it in r using the sem in r package thank you very much